What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Gaelic Gridiron Podcast. Delighted to be joined uh, this week by Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker, Mr. Michael Walker. Michael, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Uh, first of all, Happy New Year and congratulations on making the playoffs. Uh, a great win against Baltimore last weekend. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. Happy New Year. So, you know, how are preparations going for the game against the Bills? Man, it's going real good. We already had two meetings in. Um, technically, we don't even start the week till tomorrow, but uh, we already had two meetings in. Uh, we just got off a player-only meeting today. Uh, the guys are locked in. We're fired up. You know, you came to the um, you came to the Steelers kind of halfway through the season this year. You mightn't have really experienced the kind of atmosphere against a team, the rivalry of the of the Ravens. So what was it like to be in that kind of atmosphere? Man, it was it was incredible. Um, Obviously, they didn't have they didn't play everybody, but um, just to be a part of something like that, you know, I've been watching uh, I've been watching this game, you know, since I was, you know, four or five years old and, you know, hearing about Pittsburgh Steelers versus Baltimore Ravens rivalry and uh, just to be a part of it was incredible. So you're looking ahead now to the wild card weekends against Buffalo. I mean, and obviously you're, you're practicing hard preparing, but how, how do you prepare or scheme for a player like Josh Allen? Yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, Josh Allen's an incredible player. Um, you know, he's he's from around where I was born at. You know, I've known him forever. We played against each other in college. Um, you know, he's a, he's an incredible player. But uh, we we have to play against Lamar Jackson twice a year. So I don't know the guys are ready for it. Obviously, it's going to be a challenge. But with his mobility and his arm, but we got some guys in our division who are pretty good at quarterback as well. Yeah, I mean, Josh Allen's an incredible player. Um, I think he's one of the best in this league. Um, you know, he can make every throw. He's athletic. He's big. Um, he can move, quarterback mobility. Um, what helps us out is that we have some pretty good quarterbacks in our division. You know, we go, go against Lamar Jackson twice a year. Um, and just players in that in that caliber who can move around. Um, so with us, it's always about – it's kind of more of what we do. You know, we got to make sure we focus on what we're doing, um, and then everything will take care of itself. And not only do they have, you know, one of the most mobile and dynamic quarterbacks in the league, there's also some really talented skill players there. I mean – who stands out to you right now as a defensive player being the biggest threat on, on next Sunday? A uh, defensive player for like, so Buffalo Bills defense? No, I mean, you as a defensive player, who stands out to you as being, you know, their biggest offensive threat? Oh, man, I mean, you already know Stefan Diggs is the number one. I mean, everybody knows he's he's top five in this league. You know, he, he comes to work every day. I mean, I, I personally, uh, me and Stefan Diggs are on the same agency, so I got to chop it up with him once a year at our agency retreats. I got so much respect for that dude. Um, I mean, he's just a dog at the end of the day. And someone who's really been flashing to me, the running back cook, I mean, man, he, he looks explosive. He looks really good. So he's someone who's really been standing out to me personally. And I mean, I can't even, you can't even talk about them without talking about those two tight ends. You know, the two tight ends that they got, the rookie, and also they got the other guy. Um, they're both really good players, you know. Um, that's going to be a challenge for us. Um, so we definitely, especially for me personally, being a linebacker, um, the running backs and the tight ends are going to be a challenge. Have you been, uh, you know, obviously you're an inside linebacker primarily yourself. Is James Cook one of those players that you've been, you've been kind of watching tape on to see you know, looking for little little cues or for anything that can give you the edge on Sunday. Yeah, like I, like I said, we just started like our preparation, uh, you know, yesterday and today um, of the Buffalo Bills and just watching the games, you know, it was like, wait a minute, this guy keeps popping up. He just keeps flashing, keeps flashing. I mean, he's a player who's really, really caught my eye. So when I get back in and dive deeper in the tape, um, definitely going to have to take a, a hard look at him because uh, he's, he's a player who's really trending up in this league. You came to the Steelers, like like I said earlier on, relatively late in the season, I suppose, at the end of October, start of November. I mean, was there much of a learning curve for you to get accustomed to the defense? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been, it, it was it was a little, um, like I said, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, you know, jump on a moving train, coming to, coming to a team um, that's already has a lot of things going for them. You come to a team like Pittsburgh, who has a lot of tradition, a lot of expectations, um, you know, you kind of just have to hop on the train and get going. You know, my linebacker coach, uh, Aaron Curry, does a great job. I mean, I meet with him all the time. Um, he, he's done a really good job of getting me up to speed and allowing me to play. Um, I think I was only on the practice squad for like 10 days before I got, you know, the starting job. So um, I just really give a big shout out to my linebacker coach for getting me ready. And at one point during the season, we saw that you were actually wearing the green dot on your helmet, which is the defensive play color. 
on the yeah. field. I mean, to, to go from, you know, joining the team mid-season to being in that position, I mean, what was that like? Man, I mean, it was really cool. It, it was just the... It was a it was a second of like okay you gotta have trust you know I, I just got here but you know they trusted me and obviously they went with somebody who's been here longer with the dot but just the fact that in the game the decision they were like okay we're gonna give him the dot shows that they had the trust in me to be able to to play in this league and and obviously you know being released from Atlanta and then you know shipping around a little bit and coming to this team on such a short notice with the green dot shows that they have trust in me on such a short timing frame to go out there and play. And I mean, I'm still playing. So, I mean, things has been, been looking really good. Yeah. It, it, like you say, it shows the the trust that coach Tomlin and the rest of the, the, the coaches have in you. I mean, you see the, the passion and animation that coach has in the sideline. What's, what's coach Tomlin like to play for? Man, it's 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 crazy. I, I talked to so many people about this. Like Coach Tomlin is somebody that, as a kid, like you've always wanted to play for. You know, he's just a just the tradition, just to see his success. He's just a player that you just you just know brings it out of you. And when you kind of walk around the building, it's almost like a certain expectation for you to go out there and and do your best and perform at such a high level because he's there. You know, he comes into the building with the same energy, with the same message every day, regardless. When we were on that little slump. And, you know, now we won three straight. I mean, he comes in with the same energy every day and expectation for us. So, I mean, it's been incredible to play for him. And I think he's a really, really good coach. We saw some of your fellow defensive players citing Coach Tomlin as the reason that the Steelers are now in this position. I mean, he has kept them the levels of motivation. He's always had the belief. I mean, is is that something that is accurate from your kind of point of view? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, I think Coach Tomlin is the ultimate player coach. You know, obviously there's going to be things where he puts his foot down, but he he really allows the players to be themselves, you know, let you be you. Um, he really believes in building that camaraderie around the team and letting guys be each other, hang out with each other, you know, really love up on each other and, and really just come together as one. And I think he, he leads the charge with that because he's such a, a good person. I mean, he's a great coach, but even better man. So it really helps. I think he really built that, that way that, that took us to this point. I'm, what attracted you to joining the Steelers? I mean, when you, when you were when you were released from, from Atlanta and you were looking for a new team, what was it about Pittsburgh that said, "Oh, I want to go and play there"? Well, when I was released from Atlanta, I actually did my first workout with Pittsburgh before even before we won. So, um, you know, I did I did a workout, did really well doing my workout. Um, my linebacker coach actually the guy who worked me out, and he told him, you know, hey, he wants me to, he wants him to sign me, but it just came down like a numbers thing, you know, like they didn't have enough numbers on the spot or whatever. But, um, you know, just the tradition of Pittsburgh, you know, it's 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 the you see our, our division is the hardest division of football, you know, it's just that hard nose hitting, you know, um, somewhere in my career. You know, they labeled me as like a, a pass, you know, pass protector linebacker, not a downhill linebacker. So just to be able to go to Pittsburgh, the most, you know, hard hitting club out there and be able to play. I mean, to me, it's just like the no brainer, you know, let you know, prove people wrong. You know, I'm not just a pass catcher, you know, so just go out there and, and our pass defender, go out there and go make plays in one of the hardest divisions there is. And what was it like joining such a historic organization as the Steelers and becoming a man of steel? Man, I mean, it was cool, man. It's just you, you always hear about so much. There's so much history and so much tradition that goes around here. And like, you know, even in Atlanta, you know, like I was drafted there, but just Pittsburgh is just so like, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, it's a whole different feeling being over here. So throughout the season, we've really seen how the defense has been, it's been the heart and soul of the team. Like it really has keep, ha, has kept, you know, the, the playoff hopes alive all the season. The offense mightn't have been performing to scratch. The, the defense has always had it, had the standard. I mean, what's it like being part of, being part of that unit to you? Man, I mean, first, just being able to play alongside T.J. Watt has is, is been incredible for me. I mean, uh, T.J. Watt is a generational talent, you know. It's like almost the equivalent of playing with LeBron James out there. Like, that dude is un like he's unstoppable. And just to see him come to work every day and to see him, I mean, he literally averages a sack every single game. Like, every day he walks out there, he gets a sack. Like, it's insane to watch this man work and, and just to be – alongside him is crazy you know we got Mika Fitzpatrick out there at safety I mean these we're, we're really playing I'm playing with players who you know they keep going like this they're training in Hall of Fame careers you know and it's just it's incredible to be out there and be a part of it um I just try to do my part every day and uh just you know live up to the standard of being a Pittsburgh Steeler you know there was a point throughout the season where a lot of us watching were like oh this this isn't going 
this isn't going the way we would have liked it to go. And I imagine it would it, it was even harder for the players there. I mean, at a, when you joined and things mightn't have necessarily been going as well as they should have been, did you ever say to yourself or think to yourself that it would be a possibility that you'd be in the playoffs come the end of the season? Man, that, that it's crazy because something around the building, like no one ever wavered. You know, everyone always knew we'd, we'd turn it around. It's going to come. It's, you know, it's going to come. It's going to come. Like nobody ever wavered. Obviously, losing those three games in a row sucked um, to, you know, two two-win teams. Um, you get all that negativity coming from the outside. But in the locker room, the message was always the same. It was, you know, keep all, block it all up. We're going to go on a run. We're going to get this thing turned around. We're going to make the playoffs. And that's, I think that was really cool to be around a group of, a group of people who – just generally never wavered from that. They always knew we'd be here. You were originally drafted back in 2020 by the Atlanta Falcons. Tell me about some of the major differences between that franchise and and the Steelers. I mean, what stands out to you the most? Well, I mean, for me, it's a, it's a little different because, you know, I was drafted. Uh, my coaching staff, head coach, was relieved of his job six weeks into my rookie year, and then they cleared house the year after that. So, like, I... I truly feel like I never really got to establish like, you know, Atlanta Falcon is like home home because when the new coaching staff came in, it was almost like another rookie year for me. You know, they didn't draft me. Um, I wasn't third choice. They just, I was already there. So I never really felt like, you know, that. And um, obviously I was here, I'm new here. So I don't really feel like that here yet, but I can see the way that the coaching staff and the front office treat their guys. You know, I can see these guys been together for four plus years, five plus years, coaching staffs, you know? So, you could see the way that they, they treat their guys and how they feel about their guys. And it's just a whole different feeling for me um, joining this. And obviously I'm not in there yet, but like, hopefully, you know, I could become one of their guys and, you know, it'll stick around. So does Pittsburgh feel like it could be your, your home of the future if, if they, if they keep you around? Man, I mean, hey, God willingly, you know, you never know what's going on in this league. Um, shoot, I thought I was going to be in Atlanta for the rest of my career. So you never know what's going to happen in this league. But God willingly, I mean, I, it just feels more more family in this in this building. Throughout your time or during your time in Atlanta, you actually picked off Cam Newton and ran, ran it back 66 yards for a touchdown. I mean, does that stand out to you as being one of your career highlights today? Yeah, man. I mean, everybody who knows me personally knows Cam Newton was my favorite football player ever you know like it was just it's a dream come true you know to be able to do that um obviously not for him but you know just for me like i've always i've loved cam newton since i was in high school you know i i followed him around his career um i think he's a great player when i have a player and to be able to get that as like a highlight play of my nfl careers i mean just something special you know um i could talk to my i talk to my family about it and you know talk to my friends about it and it's something even when i go places they're like hey didn't you pick off cam newton this is one of those highlight things that kind of just follow you around so like it's it's really cool so that's definitely like one of your has to be one of your favorite football memories, right? But what else kind of stands out to you as being like you've obviously been been playing football since you were a kid. I mean, all the way through, you know, Pop Warner or high school and college, and now in the pros. But like, is there like a really kind of moment that stands out to you as being like the highlight of your football career to date? Yeah, um, I would say my the twenty eighteen Fresno State College Championship. Uh, you know, Mountain West Championship game, just because in college, you know, you're so much closer, you know, like the NFL, like it's a job, you know, obviously like it, it's, it's your job, you know, you go here in the NFL, you have to be professional and stuff like that. When you're in college, you know, like, yeah, you're technically an adult, but you're a kid, you know, you're a bunch of kids who are around each other. Um, you love each other. You're with each other all day. Um, when I was in college, my buddies, I have a group chat with my buddies right now. And it's, you know, I haven't been in college in what five years now. So um, it's just, it was just such a tight knit group. And, you know, we always stay together, you know, we'd be in each other's weddings, you know, it's, it's just college. There's nothing like it. And so I would say that college championship, what we went through that 2018 season is really like my favorite memory of, of all time of football. And go, going back to that interception of Cam Newton, I mean, that's something that's actually quite rare for inside linebackers is is picking off passes because typically you're not in man coverage, right? So you also had a, an interception this year. I mean, do you typically find that they're kind of hard to come by in your in your role? Yeah, I mean, one thing about me um, for my football career, I've always been known as like a splash play type of guy. You know, like it's it's one of those things where the negatively was like, you know, sometimes the routine plays as linebacker gets away from me, but he's going to make a splash play. You know, and that's something that in my career I've tried to make a little bit more balanced, but that's something that I've been riding on, you know, high school, college, and now in the pros. Um, you know, I have, I have an interception every year. 
Um, so just, you know, trying to get the ball back more and, you know, get turnovers and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely hard, but I, I tend to find myself around the ball a lot. So, I mean, I think at this point, it's just something that just comes natural. And is that something that you focus on as a player is consistently looking for ways to make those splash plays? A hundred percent, you know, um, in this league, you're going to find coaching staff who wants you to, your assignment is to say, you need to be in this gap. You're going to find coaches who say, Hey, look, man, freelance, do what you got to do. Be you. You're going to find coaches who say, if you get the ball back, I don't care what you do. So, I mean, it really just kind of depends on what your coaching staff wants from you. And, um, I think that's something when I was my first coaching staff with the Falcons really valued, but then, you know, when they were relieved of their job, the new coaching staff came on, it wasn't the same, um, you know, expectations. So, um, just kind of, it's really just about trying to find what the coaches are asking about you. But I mean, for me, getting the ball back is always going to be the, the most important thing. So that's something I'm always going to keep in my career. And what have what are the what have what have the the coaching staff in particular, um, Terrell Austin in, in in Pittsburgh? What have they asked you to do most of as a, as a player? When you uh, when you come on a shit, you know, you come on a train that's already moving. You know, I joined the season late, as we talked about. Um, for them, it's really about me doing my job. You know, don't try to do too much. Let the plays come to you. You know, um, I got the pick early in the season. Well, early in my time being there. Um, but just, so, you know, it's more from them. It's more like, okay, you're new. We, we need to do these routine plays. You know, you got to get down to routine plays. So um, that's something that I want to show them I could do. And hopefully, you know, if I get invited back here for OTAs and training camp, then we could take that next step where, you know, I can get a little bit more freedom. I get a little bit more doing kind of what I do. You know, I kind of felt like in the beginning of this, like I was playing on eggshells, you know, if I do something wrong, you know, I might get benched or something like that, you know. So hopefully I'm thinking, um, you know, I'll get invited back. We'll be able to have a whole offseason together and then I can really start playing like how I play. Looking ahead now to to the weekend and to Buffalo, I mean, it's the wild card. It's the, it's the playoffs. The preparations on to, to the way you you approach training uh, practice change, or is it is it business as usual there in Pittsburgh? Man, everybody's gonna tell you um, you don't gotta do nothing different. It's just another game. But at the end of the day, it's the playoffs. It ain't just another game. You know what I'm saying? Um, for us, we I mean, if you you know you watch follow our our season, like we we've, we've been basically playoff games. We had we had you know do or die. So. For us, it's going to be a little bit more of just the same message, you know, do what you do. But at the end of the day, in the back of your mind, you know, hey, this is the playoffs. You know, like it's just things are going to be, it's going to feel a little different. Air is going to feel a little different out there. But um, just for practice, I know Coach T is going to do a big job, a good job of killing us. Like, hey, we've already been here before. We had to win last, we had to win before that. So, um, you know, just he's going to try to keep it the same. But I know players in the back of their mind are going to know, like, yeah, this, this is the playoffs. And like, between me and you now, you can you can be honest. Coach Tom is not going to see this. I don't. I don't think. We, you never know. I mean, like, can, like, can you see yourselves in the Steelers getting getting past the the the, the Buffalo Bills and getting to the the divisional round? And even, I mean, is the Super Bowl out of the question at the minute? Man, honestly, we've been we've been talking amongst each other and and you know watching film and stuff. Like, we we really think we match up well against the Buffalo Bills. Um, you know, we don't, I don't think it's going to be a, a high scoring game as people intend it to be. I think, you know, it's going to be ugly and that's, we win ugly, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers, we win those close knit ugly games. So that's our goal, make it ugly, um, come out on top. And then, you know, when we play against the Baltimore Ravens, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers just had the Baltimore Ravens number, you know, like it's just, uh, I think it's 10, 10 and one in the last 11 games they play. Like you never know. And if you get past them. I mean, shoot, now we're in the AFC Championship. So, obviously, we got to go one game at a time, starting with Buffalo. But there's a lot of belief and a lot of faith in this locker room that we can actually go on a run and go get this thing. I really hope so. As a diehard, as the biggest self-proclaimed biggest Steelers fan in Ireland, I really hope so. I have one last question before, you, before I let you go, Michael. And thank you again so much for your time. I really appreciate it. We, we talked before we jumped on air that you're currently in your car about to go clothes shopping for your, your playoff fish, <laughs> your play at outfit. What what is that? What do you have in mind? What are you going for? Man, I I wanted to do the suits, but all my custom suits are at home in Dallas, so I won't have enough time to do that. Um, so I'm gonna go in there. We'll see we'll see if we come. I'm gonna call the wife, call her on the phone, you know, FaceTime her, see what she thinks. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get something nice out there. Well, best of luck clothes shop, and I'm sure she'll give you plenty of fashion advice. Uh, <laughs> Michael Walker, um, Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker. Thank you so much for coming on on the podcast. I really appreciate your time. Best of luck this weekend against the, the Bills. I will be glued to my television at 6 o'clock Irish time. 
uh, on Sunday, and we'll be uh, we'll be shouting, "Here we go, Steelers!" from from Ireland. Appreciate it, man. Man, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you, man. Go Steelers. Go Steelers. Take care.